Check this caterpillar out. It's covered in ice crystals and looks like it's frozen solid. One frosty morning I had gone down to my garden to take some photographs. As expected, some of the plants were looking spectacular, but I didn't expect to find a cabbage white butterfly larva encrusted in ice. This species is found in many parts of the world. In North America, it is known as the imported cabbage worm or the cabbage butterfly. In Europe, where it originated, it is known as the small white. As soon as the day warmed up, our frosty caterpillar woke up and began feeding on the plant. How did it do that? And the bigger questions, how do insects survive winter? Many insects seem to disappear in winter and then reappear in spring like magic. How do they do that? Where do they go? As you probably know, insects don't generate their own body heat. They rely on external warmth. So insects have to find a way to survive the cold temperatures of winter in those parts of Australia and other parts of the world that actually have winter. Insects have an advantage here over other animals and it has to do with their life cycles, either of complete metamorphosis or gradual metamorphosis. There is a bug basics video on insect life cycles linked up here in the cards. Insects have adapted to overwinter at particular life stages, egg, nymph, larva, pupa, adult, depending on the species. Let's get back to our frosty caterpillar. Being European in origin, it is well adapted to short bursts of cold weather. Cabbage white butterfly can easily survive a bit of frost, but extended periods of freezing weather would kill it. To survive long periods of freezing weather, they pupate and use their internal antifreeze. Cabbage white butterfly is one of many insects that produce antifreeze proteins. It's similar to how ethylene glycol stops the water in car radiators from freezing. Antifreeze proteins within the pupa prevent ice crystals forming. As well as that, the pupae also enter a period of suspended animation known as diapause. Further development is suspended until warm weather returns. And there's more. Cabbage white butterfly pupae are usually attached somewhere within the foliage of a plant where frost is less likely to settle. Many native and introduced butterflies and moths in Australia survive winter as diapausing pupae. Some species may have antifreeze properties, others may not. Many species of insects pupate under leaf litter or underground or under the bark of a tree where they are sheltered. Avoiding cold weather by finding a protected spot is a common overwintering strategy for many insects. For example, in the last video, we talked about the green scarab beetle. They survive cold winters underground as pupae. Other scarab beetles, such as Christmas beetles, have a similar strategy to survive cold winters. Beetles of other families, such as longicorn beetles, survive winter as wood-boring larvae inside trees, well protected from extreme weather. Jewel beetles do the same. If you like this video so far, why not give it a thumbs up? YouTube is a very competitive space and any help that you can give is much appreciated. What about other insects? You don't usually see dragonflies and damselflies flying about during winter. They are underwater as larvae. Termites are especially vulnerable to temperature change, but they are well protected within their nests. The temperature inside a termite nest is very stable and may only vary a degree or two during the year. Seriously good insulation. Another way to avoid winter is to migrate. And the most famous and spectacular of these is the monarch butterfly migration in North America. The North American monarch population east of the Rocky Mountains migrates from as far north as Canada all the way down to Mexico, where the adult butterflies hibernate en masse and are a major tourist attraction. <sighs> one day. The monarch population that is on the west side of the Rocky Mountains migrates south to California. The monarch butterfly also occurs in Australia, 
where it is usually known as the Wanderer. It arrived here in the late 19th century after island hopping from Hawaii. In Australia, the monarch butterfly does migrate and form winter aggregations, but nowhere near as spectacular as in North America. Monarch butterflies aren't the only insects which cluster together over winter in the adult form. Some species of ladybird beetles do the same. Gall-inducing insects are protected from cold snaps inside their woody galls. For example, check out the video I made about the insect that induces tea tree flower galls. There's a link in the description. Adult flies are pretty much absent um, during winter. They are likely to be pupae underground or under leaf litter or under bark or something like that, depending on the species. What about ants? You'll see the odd ant wandering around occasionally, but usually the colony is safe in their nest underground or inside a tree or where, wherever it is that they have made their nest. Everything slows down inside the nest. Some of the worker ants might die off, but they will be replaced come spring. Some aphid species lay eggs for the winter, but here in Australia, most aphid species tend not to lay eggs. Some aphid species survive winter in low numbers as wingless adult females on garden plants, including weeds. Cold tolerant species such as the cabbage aphid continue to reproduce slowly during winter. Either way, once warmer spring weather arrives, the aphids breed rapidly. Their numbers may be further enhanced in spring by winged aphids flying in from elsewhere. What about those little wasps which parasitize aphids? They are safe and sound as pupae inside their aphid mummies. If you don't know what they are, there's a link in the description to a video I made about them. Even though you may not see a lot of insects flying around during winter, they may be nearby, you know, hibernating as pupae or larvae, you know, underground or underwater or whatever. Winter doesn't kill off all the insects, it just slows them down a bit. Thanks for watching.